guys, and welcome to Studio 50 Floor. <laughs> so, okay, let's get right into it. I did something a few weeks ago that I really, really loved. I had some of the Decoart Extreme Sheen in the pink tourmaline, and I paired it with Golden's um, Permanent Violet Deep. And I really, really love how they blended together. This is one of my test canvases. And this is why I do this, is so that I can go back and look at it and see, like, if you look at this corner over here, there's the pearl, there's the Payne's Gray, there's the pink tourmaline, there's the darker permanent violet, back to pink tourmaline. So you can read it like a map and look at what you like and what you don't like. So I did this one, which has 24 karat gold and the pearl in it. And there's some parts that I really like, like I like this part, and I like this part down here. I'm not so crazy about a lot of the gold, though, in the center. This is another one that I did without the 24 karat gold in it. So this, ooh, look how pretty that looks. <laughs> pretty blingy, huh? See, that's the pearl that does that, that luster. It's so pretty, wow. Very cool. Ooh, they look neat up there. So this one doesn't have the 24 karat gold in it, and I like this gradation a lot better, actually, than some of this. So I think what I've figured out is that I need to sandwich the gold between two layers of pearl, between a layer of pearl on either side. So that's what we're gonna try to do today. Kinda gotta recreate these two combined and uh, see if I can't make it a little bit more what I want. So I am also using the 24 karat gold again today because I do wanna get some of these little cute pearl cells. You can see them. I like the little floaty ones. Um, I have been using the Goldens lately, and it's lovely stuff, but it doesn't do the little pearl cells. So, we're gonna get started. Um, I have a base coat that I'm going to lay down. This one is Bare White, I'm sorry, Bare Satin Coffee House Paint. It is paint and primer. Um, it's a satin enamel. It's a, it's a, well, it is leaving a slight mound on a mound, but it's thinner than all my other paints. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down while I tell you about my other colors and I will show you my other colors. Um, the reason that I start, am I using the house paint one again is because I watched one of my videos, the Waiting for Aphrodite, and I used the satin enamel house paint on that one as the base coat. And it was so cute because there were all these little tiny bubbly cells along the edges like Elise Fournier gets, and she uses house paint also. So it was really, really pretty, and I, just, I was like, wow, I haven't done that in a long time. So we're gonna play with that again today. This is Swiss Coffee, and I am i don't have white intentionally. I don't know what's lately white, it just seems very stark and contrasty to me, and that's not always what I'm looking for, especially with this one that has a lot of pearl in it, and I'm looking for that luster. I don't want something that's glaringly contrasty like the white would be. So, and this is beautiful stuff. I mean, it's it's paint and primer in one, so it's kind of like meant to be used as a base coat, first of all. And second of all, I like the color. I like the Swiss coffee. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and layer our cup. I'm going to do this on, the, on top of here so you can see. All right, so this is my Catamount Flameware 16-ounce cup holds two cups of liquid. Um, for this size canvas, we need approximately 30.8 ounces, so 31 ounces. Uh, two of these is 36, 32 ounces. So I'm gonna fill this up twice. We're gonna do ring pour. Um, I'm gonna do kind of like a fantasy pour. I might do, yeah, I'm gonna do a fantasy pour. Okay, you know, I'm gonna wipe my hands really fast so I don't get paint all over the side of my cup again. I realized last time I did that and then you guys couldn't see what was in the cup. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Alrighty. So, let's put, we're going to start, oh, I didn't tell you my colors. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that was the bare satin house paint with the, also I did put some Artist Loft white flow acrylic in there, and I also put some satin enamels warm white in there. So those three paints, and then there, that was mixed with Liquitex gloss medium and varnish, and also with some Floetrol. Um, this one is Golden Panes Gray. Love this color. It's fabulous. Nice and thick. It is leaving a mound on a mound on a mound on a mound on a mound. I want to do ring pours and I want separation of my lines and colors, so I'm keeping my paint thick. 
This next one is Decort Americana Decor 24 karat gold. Leaving a mound on a mound on a mound. Also mixed with the Quitex gloss medium and varnish. And then Lotrol. And a little bit of water. Because that was the last of my jar. And I put a little bit of water in there and shook it up. And, okay, so this one is Golden's Permanent Violet Deep. I love this color. Absolutely delicious. And leaving a mound on a mound on a mound. Nice big fat mounds. Because I do want it thick. I'm going to do a ring pour. The lovely pink tourmaline that I waited a while to get. So I got like uh, two bottles of this and then I used them up really quick and then I was out. <laughs> so it's very cute. It's such it's like a watermelony, like watermelon bubblegum is what it looks like. That's how I would describe this. <laughs> but when you mix it with the pearl, which is my next color, the Deco Art Americana Decor Pearl, um, that pink tourmaline gets this beautiful luster to it. The pearl in general from Deco Art Americana Decor adds this beautiful luster, very luxurious pearl, like literally like inside of a clamshell pearl feeling to everything, which is awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So now you know my colors. I want to recreate this one more with, oh, so that means that I should put some gold on my corners. See, I'm glad I looked. I'm going to put just a little bit of gold on the corners because I do want to encourage selling. Actually, I'm going to just go around the whole perimeter of it. What the heck, we'll put a little bit in the middle too. I'll put a full puddle to pour into. Okay, so first color. We're going to start with a little bit of the Payne's Gray. Now, I am going to sandwich the gold between layers of pearl because I don't want the gold mixi mixing with the blue, the per with the Payne's, and I don't really want it mixing with the violet either. Okay, so I got a nice thick layer of panes there. And since I said I'm not going to put it, so here we go. So I'm going to take my pearl and put a little bit in there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of gold in. About the same amount. And then I'm going to put another layer of pearl. So I'm sandwiching that gold in the middle of the two layers of pearl. Now let's go with our violet. And some pink tourmaline now. And again, I want to do that where I do the pink or the pearl with the gold in between. So a layer of pearl, a layer of gold. another layer of pearl. Okay, now I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to go some panes, a thicker layer of panes, because this is going to be the middle of the pour. Then a thicker layer of the violet, because I really like that. Then I'm going to put some, should we go with the pink tourmaline or the pearl gold pearl again? Let's go with the pearl gold pearl. So pearl, Gold, and I need to keep some paint for my next cup. <laughs> Pearl. Okay, and we're going to end with some of the pink, maybe? Yeah. Kind of a thicker layer. Okay. So let's pour this one. Here we go. We're going to do a ring pour, or a fantasy pour, and I'm heavy on the rings on this one. Okay. But if I do do the straight pour part, I'm going to be very close to the canvas. So here we go. This will be a ring pour. I'm just going to let it come out because it's doing this pretty thing. Okay. Stop. Stop. You just want to keep going, huh? Okay. Do your thing, baby. Okay, that's really cool. I like that a lot. I love all of that. So this is that gold sandwich. So now our blue, our Payne's Gray has stayed blue, and our violet has stayed violet. So it worked, and this should be really, really neat. Okay, 
Let's go. I'm going to pour this other one kind of fast, not as slowly as I did before because I want to pour this. I'm going to put the three colors, the panes, the violet, and the pink tourmaline on top of each other. Now I'm going to do a layer of that white gold white. That's really cool. I kind of don't want to mess with that. I think maybe I'm going to do another puddle over here and maybe another puddle over here so there's three total. Or maybe I'll do a straight pour over on this side. Okay, let's tilt this a little bit. So this does have that, uh, you know what, no. I want to do a couple of layers around here with the violet as a sort of a flow extender because I like what's happening over there. Ooh, this is so pretty. Let's see, what else do we have left? We can put on there. We have panes. Let's get some panes around here. pink time but I don't want to use that yet okay this is some gold I am gonna take a little bit more water and just thin that out just a tiny bit and kind of pour it around as another last layer of flow extender so this is super thin now okay I'm just gonna go around see hmm. okay I like what's happening up there a lot so I'm actually gonna turn this so that <laughs> I can keep that instead of getting rid of that first there's a tripod over there which is why I'm <laughs> okay, let's get back in frame okay I'm gonna move this one kind of move this around and see what's what there's a lot of paint on here so we are going to lose some of this our task is to figure out what parts of it we want to lose and what we don't okay so I like the two edges I'm not so crazy about this but when it gets stretched out it would probably be very very cool but I'm more interested in the center of that pour so I'm going to go this way and down we didn't actually go over the edge. Okay, and then we're gonna come back and go off that edge just quick. I'm not really losing all of that. Okay, and I'm gonna come back to me. Let the weight of the paint come down here. That's very cool. Pink tourmaline is bright. Okay, I'm gonna go off of that side. So now we have an opportunity to look at it and see what we like, what we don't like, 
what's working, what's not working. Okay, we've also stretched out our edges, so I like this. Wait, I'm gonna wipe my hands again so I don't drip in the middle of it. There's still a lot of paint on here, so we do have to take some more off. So I'm gonna take off what I wanna take off, which is the stuff that I don't like. So first we find out what we like, and then you figure out what you don't like. So I do love this. I love this Payne's background with the violet coming up and the cells and the pink and the gold cells coming through. That's gorgeous. I love this. I love this. This is very cool. I can deal with this. This is pretty. This is pretty. This is a little bit too pink. So even though I like this part a lot and I like this part, it's just a little bit too shockingly pink for me. So, and since I like this edge better and this is gonna look better after I stretch it out, I'm gonna take that edge off. So here we go to that end. Thank you, Delphys. <clears throat> so we're just gonna go move this down this way a little bit more. Just gonna lock it down the canvas. We don't have to necessarily get rid of all of it, but See how the paint is still moving very quickly? It means there's still a lot on here. So it's to our benefit to get rid of the extra part that's moving really, really fast because it's going to help our canvas dry nicely and evenly and not crack. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, that's cool. I just want to take that a little bit more of that gold edge off. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to come pull it back hard. Okay. This way and this way. Can you give me my torch? Thank you. And now we're going to go back this direction stretch this edge out. See, now the paint is moving much, much slower. It's not, you know, it's still moving kind of quickly, but it's okay. It's not like going super, super fast and making big jagged peaks. So I like this a lot. I think it's cool. That's awesome. Wow, <laughs> this part over here is so pretty. Okay. I am actually going to torch it. <laughs> That's so cool. Should we see if we can keep tilting it? How far can we take it? Let's see if we can get that all down. If we can get this gold line all the way down there, we might be able to. Because I do really like what's going on in the top over here. It's very pretty. put up a little monitor so I can actually see what's going on. <laughs> so I'm not trying to like break my neck to get over there and look. Canvas, small space. <laughs> this is really neat. It's a lot. Now oh, it's moving. It's very shiny. Okay. I am not the world's most patient person. <laughs> It's definitely going. 
can see that gold line has now reached the bottom almost. Oops. Let me get a little bit this way. Hi, baby. Hello. We're shooting. Hmm? We're shooting. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Okay. I love you. She's beautiful. Oh, thank you. I love her. Oh, my sweet girl. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go just bring the weight of the paint back to the middle a little bit. This is really neat. So, I love this because this just, it's totally like everything I've been saying for a while, but you need to stretch it out to get it really to show all those beautiful hidden bits that are in there. And I love this. So we do have the satin and I have paint all over my pants. <laughs> Because I tilt it up, it drips on me. Okay, let's see. Let's torch this real quick and see what's going to happen. Because I love this. Actually, I'm not going to torch it just yet. Because I'm not entirely crazy about this point right there. I just want to see if I can stretch that out just a tiny. Either take it back and get it a little bit rounder. Or all the way to the edge. Actually, this gives me an idea. Something I was thinking about. I found this stuff, this uh, product from Golden's that is. Sorry, I'm getting paper towels over here. <laughs> so I can show you without getting my hands all gross. Okay, so I found this Golden's Pearl Mica. See if you can see. There we go. Golden's Pearl Mica flake small so if you open it up it's kind of this like chunky weird paste with like big lumps in it and then i mixed a little bit of it with some pouring medium and a little bit of floetrol and boom it's all of a sudden nice and pourable just like everything else we've been using leaving a mound on a mound and not as much of a mound on a mound but i was thinking since this is that sort of like mica flake if i had something that was kind of geode -ish, I could use some of this. So that's what I think I'm going to do in here. And I think I'm going to use it to help me cover up the things that I'm not crazy about. Actually, you know what? I have a baby spoon <laughs> left over from when my girls were little. And I'm just going to use that to try to kind of go <coughs> along in here a little bit. Now this right now looks white, but it's supposed to dry clear and have a very sparkly, shimmery sort of effect. So I'm excited about using this one. It's kind of scary when you open the jar, but. <laughs> Let's see. I don't want to get messy with it. Okay. I could pour it, I guess, but. Curious to see what this is gonna do when it's dry. It should be really neat though. I love this brand here, it's so pretty. And that's the 24 karat gold, so it's gonna dry beautifully. And I don't wanna go crazy with this stuff. Just hmm. put a tiny little bit.
right. Well, I'm excited to see what will happen with this one. <laughs> Let's torch it though and see what's gonna happen now. There's already a lot of these beautiful little pearl cells coming up, which is great. tilted it a little bit and sort of incorporate that mica. I'm just going to tilt it just one second to get it, see if it's yet ending up. So just to get it to stretch out a little bit and sort of like look like it belongs there instead of it went on afterwards, which it did go on afterwards, but maybe I'll stick to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am officially done, and I will take some close-ups for you, and then I will see you for the dried results. Okay, so this is a couple of days later. <laughs> Hello, Zen. <laughs> He's headbutting me. Oh, here we're gonna go. You're gonna headbutt the easel again. So this is a couple days later, and it's dry now. I love how this part has turned out. Nice and dark and deep. That beautiful Payne's gray with the cells floating on top of it. And this is why I love that golden's violet. You see that pearl with just the little tinge of the violet all around the edges. My camera just got darker for some reason. What happened? Okay, anyway, so you see the pink tourmaline up there. You see the pearl. This is that uh, golden's mica. That's sparkling. You can see it all around the edge. Let me stand on this side, you can see it better. It turned out really, really pretty though. Focus. And this whole section in there is just gorgeous. This is so pretty right here. When it was drying, it just looked like stained glass. It was just gorgeous. And there's our little floaty gold pearl cells from the 24 karat. And a lot of the pink tourmaline down here. I love this area up top. You can see that dark Payne's gray. And those beautiful cells floating. And I just, you can see all these lines. Really, really cool. I love that. Very neat. This part is my absolute favorite part. So pretty. Anyway. So this one is Studio 50 floor, <laughs> because I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> We're a silly bunch over here, we are. Anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.